At the moment, however, many are almost routinely suspended, and that implementation delayed for months and even years while pending adjudica uh, adjudication in courts. The unintended consequence of the swarms of injunctions is that it compromises the efficacy of the state to help create more jobs and opportunities for our people in a competitive, no-holds-barred no, no world. We are not delivering when the executive's policy for bettering security by equipping our national, our national police service with motor vehicles through leasing programs is stalled in the courts of law. It costs Kenyans lives when police officers are unable to promptly respond to emergencies. Other injunctions have led to hospitals remaining unbuilt, innovative programs that would spur our economy stuck in limbo, to mention just more, at the cost of an excess of 10 billion shillings as a result of court litigation is what we've had to pay to get that rice scheme going. Our nation is missing out on opportunities that are also going to other countries because we are not alone. There are other people competing for the same resources. There should be no debate amongst us, and I think I have stated it severally, that the judiciary is independent and it must remain so. You are an equal branch of government to the other two. But I believe it is important to underscore that the independence is established in the public interest to serve Kenyans. As you exercise it in considering whether to suspend government policies or otherwise, the public interest should be the overriding criteria. The well-being of Kenyans and their concrete interest is dependent on a government that betters their lives, but not any other more abstract or privileged other interests ahead of those of our people. And this happens when we litter the corridors of justice, of the executive, of the legislature, with corrupt gatekeepers and cartels that pander to vested interests. We are answering the questions Kenya have, have for us. Are they better off? Are they safer? Are they being treated more fairly? Are our public resources being protected from plunder by corruption? Honorable Chief Justice, you well know that I have launched and strongly supported an aggressive anti-corruption campaign as an answer to some of these searching questions. I believe the executive and its ministries, departments and agencies have undertaken policy changes, investigations and prosecutions of the fraudulent and corrupt. They have faced individuals holding high office with no regard for political or ethnic affiliation. And I believe Kenyans have been enormously encouraged by these actions. And they have been waiting for convictions or acquittals in a timely manner. I'm happy to hear from the Chief Justice that this year may be a year when Kenyans will get answers to these issues. <laughs> so, in my address to the nation last week, I highlighted the national dilemma and shame that we have been exposed to when Kenyans who have spent many years evading justice in Kenya were tried and convicted in the United States in less than a year. I believe that this case is testimony enough of how cartels were able to use gatekeepers in the executive, in various other arms of government, but also in the judiciary. 
to sustain a criminal enterprise that led to the direct suffering and deaths of Kenyans. We have corrupted our law enforcement agencies, our prosecutors, our national administrators, but also judges and magistrates. And indeed, Kenyans could not help comparing what happened in the United States and in Kenya, wondering why there is such a distance in the results that we deliver. I want to say that we will continue to work with our foreign counterparts using mutual legal and the necessary protocols to ensure that all those who shielded drug dealers and killers as has come out are brought to justice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, while we in the executive also must admit and can never claim in any way to be perfect. But I believe we can point to numerous cases of our senior officers who have been subjected to investigation and prosecution without any interference by the executive. I think we need to do this in all arms of government. As head of state and government, I will not abdicate my duty to do all that I can to protect the integrity of our judicial system and to oppose its capture by nefarious elements. So I urge the judiciary to undertake a frank internal 